you start by assuming the null hypothesis is a true statement. Then you use evidence to reach one of these conclusions. Evidence, by the way, is given to you by your sample. Here's your two options. Or they're they're, they're going to be given to you by your evidence. When you start by assuming that h sub 0 is true, that the null hypothesis is true, you, you're going to be either proving it wrong or not having enough evidence to prove it wrong. You see, here's the idea. You're going to, all, all you can do with hypothesis testing is prove something wrong. You can't ever prove it right. Remember like I, I said with the, the courts. You can't ever prove someone innocent. You can only prove them guilty or not guilty. Either you have enough evidence or you don't. Here's what that comes down to for us. Either you're going to reject the null hypothesis, or you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's it. Are you ever going to be able to accept the null hypothesis? Mm -hmm. No, never. You're never going to be able to do it. Because you're never going to have enough evidence to prove it completely right. All you're going to have enough evidence to do is to prove it wrong or not be able to prove it wrong. That, it's kind of a pessimistic way of looking at things. You can't ever prove that, that claim right. But that's the way the courts work too. You can't ever prove anybody innocent. You can only prove them guilty. This is guilty. You have enough evidence to say it's wrong or not guilty. You don't have enough evidence to say it's wrong. Does that make sense to you? This is our whole theme for hypothesis testing. So rejecting a sub zero, here's what this says in English. It says, I have enough evidence to prove this statement wrong. I have enough evidence to prove H sub zero is wrong. Here's what this says. This one says, I don't have enough evidence to prove H sub zero wrong. I don't, and then finish that off, have enough evidence to prove H sub zero wrong. So a little side note over here, you cannot accept H sub 0, it's impossible. You're, you're never ever going to accept H sub 0. You can only reject it or fail to reject it. Failing to reject it doesn't mean that you accept it. That's a common misconception for statistics students. They go, oh, well this means you reject it and this means you accept it. No. No, you reject it saying it's dead wrong or you fail to reject it. That's not saying it's right. right? Remember the, the court system, when you think about this, remember the court system. Either it's guilty, they're going to jail, or they're not guilty, they're not going to jail. But does that mean the person definitely didn't do it? No, remember OJ, he, he did it. He did it. He wrote a book saying, I, here's how I, if I, I didn't do it, but if I did, here's how I did it. Okay, <laughs> he did it. But that's what this says. Okay, he might not have gone to jail, but he definitely did it. There just wasn't enough evidence to convict him. It didn't say he was innocent. Someone who is not guilty might not be innocent, there just wasn't enough evidence to put them into prison. Do you understand the difference between being innocent and being not guilty? Yes? No? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's the idea here. You can't ever accept H sub 0. You can just prove it wrong or fail to prove it wrong. You cannot accept H sub 0. Okay, well then why in the world are we doing this if all we're doing is proving statements wrong? Well, here's the cool thing about this. We're going to have another piece to this puzzle. We're going to also have not only the null hypothesis, but the alternative hypothesis. So let's take a look at that and see how these things interplay between each other.
If h sub 0 means the null hypothesis, how are we going to write the alternative hypothesis? h sub a. We, we, some books do use a sub a. They, they do. They do ho and ha. They do the, the null hypothesis and the alternative. We're going to use h sub 1 because we want to be proper and not have fun, right, basically. Uh, no, it, it just means the, the other hypothesis, the alternative. If you think about binary, 0, 1, that's the two different options you have, okay? There's the, the null hypothesis, that's the statement of equality. The alternative hypothesis is going to be the opposite statement of this thing. It's not going to have an equal sign in it. It's going to have w one of these symbols, either less than, greater than, or not equal to. The equality goes here. H sub 1 has the value, the parameter is different than the state of the, the H sub 0 has it. So I'll, I'll write that out for you. What this does, this states that the parameter, whatever we're talking about, the mean of the proportion, has a value different than H sub 0. Remember, parameter for us means one of these. Say the parameter has a value different than h sub 0 has it. Here's how you can be different mathematically. In real life, you can be different lots of different ways. But in, in math, you can be different one of three different, one of three ways. You can be less than a stated value, you can be greater than a stated value, or you can be not equal to a stated value. These are going to be given to you in the problem. You just have to determine which one that it's talking about. So there's three different ways to not be equal. Less than, greater than, or simply not equal. Either you're less than or greater than that. How many will feel okay with this, this so far? Good. All right. Let me give you a, a for instance on how you're going to see h sub 1, just like I, I did over here. h sub 1, we might see proportions. You could have a proportion less than a stated value, like 0.53. Or you could have greater than. Or you could have not equal to. Those are really the only three ways that you're going to see h, h sub 1, the alternative hypothesis. You'll see the, a less than sometimes, or greater than, or not equal to. We'll get to the why those are the way they are in just a bit. How you find out whether it's less than or greater than or not equal to, we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a while. Right now, I just want you to get comfortable with the notation. Are you comfortable with the notation? So h sub 0 is always going to have a what? It's always going to be equal, no matter what. That's a statement of equality. Is h sub 1 ever going to have an equal sign? Not unless there's a cross through it, a line through it. That means it's not equal. There's, there's three options there. We're, I'll teach you how to find out which option you have as we go through our problems. But you're going to have one of three things. If you're talking about not a proportion, you're talking about a mean, you could have mu less than a given value, 12, let's say. Or you could have it greater than, or you could have it not equal to. Now, here's the whole idea. The whole idea is that these hypotheses work together. We work together. You see, we're not actually going to be proving anything directly. What we're going to be doing is proving things indirectly. It's an interesting way to look at it. But you're going to have for each problem a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis, which is the opposite statement of the null. Do you get it? You have two statements. One has the equality, one is opposite of that. So here's how this works. If you reject the null, that means that indirectly you accept the alternative. Do you get that? That's kind of cool. So can you accept this one? No, but you can prove it wrong. And if you prove this one wrong, it automatically proves that one right. Do you get that? 
So by proving this statement wrong, we prove that one right. What if we don't prove this statement wrong? Does it prove that one right? No, that it's inconclusive. You don't know. You didn't say anything about the problem. You didn't prove this right, but you didn't prove that one right either. You did nothing. So that's, that's basically the way this works. These two things work in conjunction with each other, the null and the alternative. If you prove the null hypo hypothesis wrong, that means that you accept the alternative. If you fail to prove the null hypothesis wrong, then that means you fail to accept the null hypothesis. They work together. You have to have both. You can't just prove a statement right, not with statistics. If the evidence is only there to convict. It's, very, it's a very pessimistic way to look at it, but literally it's a, cult, it's a court system, not a cult system. We're not in a cult here. We're not Pythagoreans or something. You know the Pythagorean story, right? Killed them anyway. I'll tell you that story another time if you want. Uh, but we're, we're in a court system. We're in a court system. If you prove this one wrong, it's guilty, then you were right to convict that person. Right? You, you got it. If you fail to prove that wrong, then, then, then you can't convict that person. He's free to go. Does that make sense to you? You prove this one wrong, he goes to jail. Bingo. You don't prove that one wrong, he doesn't go to jail. Nothing happens. He walks free. You don't know whether he's right or wrong. You don't know whether either of them won was right or wrong. So ultimately, this is what it boils down to. If you want to prove a claim, I hope you're, you have your critical thinking hats on. No one has to, oh, one person, ha one person has a hat on. The rest of you, imagine hats. Two people have hats on. Technically, that's a hat. It's good, I like it. So, if you want to prove a statement true, if you want to prove it right, can you state it as the null? If you want to prove it right, all you can do over here this null is prove it wrong or fail to prove it wrong. Can you accept it? That means you can't prove it right. So if you want to, to prove a statement right, should I, use, should I state it as the null hypothesis? If I want to prove a statement right, true, I must state it as the alternative hypothesis because that's the only one you can accept. And the only way you can accept it is by proving that one wrong. So that's what it boils down to. I know this is very vague because we're in the, in the introduction. Uh, trust me, we'll go through lots of specific examples later. I just need to get you kind of comfortable with the, the scenario before we, we get to it. Are you okay with that? So here's what it boils down to for you. If you want to support a statement, you must state it as H1, not H0. If you want to support a claim, that means prove it right, basically. If you want to support a claim, you must state it as h sub 1, not h sub 0. Why not? Well, you can't prove that right. You can't prove h sub 0 right. All you can do is prove it wrong. You don't want to make a claim you're trying to prove right and then prove it wrong, do you? Let's look at your options, okay? Let's say that you stated your claim as h sub 0. I'll teach you how to state a claim in just a bit. Let's say you stated it as h sub 0. All you could do with that is prove your claim wrong or not prove your claim at all. Are either of those a good thing? Yes. 